My name is Ingo Bressler and I'm a programmer by training. I uh, program uh, data analyzer software uh, since a couple of years and um, yeah, today I want to give a programming tutorial on how to look at small angle scattering data with Python as part of the better scattering course. And um, yeah, let's begin a bit. So um, in the overview, it will consist of three parts, which each being one hour. I try to make it kind of an interactive session. Uh, how, yeah, depending on how this goes here in this format. So um, I really want to encourage everyone to try and test the um, code samples I provide themselves on their computer. I will go into this. Later, how we could, how we do this? Um, there's an um, online um, tool, yeah, which we can use for for programming, having this uh, Jupyter Lab in an online um, session available. So that should provide some kind of infrastructure for that. And yeah, now going into yeah a rough overview of the content I will cover here. So I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with the Jupyter notebooks yet. So I will yeah give a short overview of them, how, yeah, what it looks like, how to use it, and so on, and then continue with a quick, quick introduction to Python in general, which consists of uh, what are the basic data structures, yeah, as most programming languages uh, provide them, and yeah, what to do to plot something, plot some curves, and um, yeah, basic um, building blocks um, can be done with functions, how to define a function, and um, use one for calculating things or yeah, encapsulating um, a certain functionality. And um, furthermore, um, how to handle files and folders, look at the file structure, get uh, yeah, find some, some data files, for, for example. And yeah, this will, this will be for today. For tomorrow, I plan then on um, loading and plotting some small angle scattering data and also implementing a small angle scattering model. And this is a requirement for the third part where we want to um, fit that um, self, this programmed uh, small angle scattering model to the actual data we loaded from file. That's the overall package, which, yeah, in general, a uh, program for small angle, for uh, curve fitting um, does in general. So I hope we can uh, cover this in these three times one, so three hours approximately. Um, so I think. It might be a rather steep curve if you're really new to it, but um, yeah, if, if something is really unclear in between or it stops you from um, going on or understanding something, don't hesitate to ask quite right in the chat. I try to uh, get get uh, see this and, and and go into these questions. So um, feel free to to ask in between. And um, in the beginning of the upcoming parts tomorrow and the next day. Um, and the day after, um, I will give a short recap of what we did before. So it's also possible to just um, join in if you want to skip the first part and yeah, continue later uh, or step in later in the course. So yeah, this is for today. Um, and yeah, to start, I would encourage yeah everyone to visit the website Jupiter.org. It's um, I will do this in my uh, browser as well to uh, yeah get along. We type um, we visit Jupiter.org and here's a button for try it in your browser. And there we get an overview. So Jupyter is a general software platform for providing uh, programming tools in the browser window, which can yeah be provided on a server or even run at your local PC. But for this course, we do it on the server. So there are several options. By default, it's or classical. It's often used with Python, but there are also other programming languages available. And just to let you know, for example, Julia R for statistic um, uh, programming, also C++, Ruby, and so on. So we click on this Jupyter Lab, and then the um, binder service is it called runs and tries to um, yeah set up your own um, uh, Jupyter Lab session. This might um, need a minute, perhaps. So in the meantime, I will go. I will continue to yeah look at some 
yeah, more information on the uh, Jupyter Lab and how to get it running. So um, if you want to run this on your own PC locally, I really um, recommend the Anaconda package. It's available for uh, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. This is called individual packages, which are free. That uh, yeah, really is easy, really easy to install, and then provides um, a simple user interface to just start Jupyter Lab, for example, on your own PC. So you don't need an internet connection. Then can also try and do this in a train, perhaps, or yeah, where you don't have internet, basically. And um, there's also the Pew Python interpreter, which is um, the core of uh, the Python language, um, which is not web-based, but kind of a console program. You can see it here. It's um, basically the kernel which um, yeah, processes the code you type in a text file. I can show this later, just to get a comparison and um, yeah, at least that you have seen what is uh, what exists. Or yeah, I think often it's uh, just really helpful to to see what what can be done and you don't have to know this on at the top of your head every time but uh, at least seeing it once is perhaps uh, useful and for this co this courses i provided some material at a github repository there's also where we find our test data or the data to play with later it's under GitHub, the BAM Research account, and then GitHub tutorial underscore us. Um, I will open this too. It looks something like that. In my case, it's black uh, because of my settings, but could a uh, dark, uh, dark theme, I mean, um, but could also be light. So there are my slides with the links in it, and also I will upload the um, Jupyter notebooks from all, every, yeah, from the three days, basically. So this will, update um, after every day a bit to get the latest um, yeah, version of what we typed down basically. In the data folder there's example data, it's a um, measurement of uh, silver spheres. Maybe we will come back to that tomorrow or perhaps later, uh, depending on how fast this will go. Back to the documentation. There's also lots of documentation about programming online, of course, and I recommend it as kind of a reference book, what you, yeah, where you can look up things. And this Python documentation of the built-in tools is very helpful. So this can often be found by Googling for Python standard library. And here you have all the, um, um, yeah, overview with what is possible, what can be done, and so on. Um, if, yeah. You need to find out some, some details, it's uh, really um, helpful. By going on the one level up to the general Python documentation, I also recommend or can very much recommend a tutorial. They often offer a tutorial to cover the basic um, features and sets, but that's really a lot. So <laughs> this will be, uh, this will require a lot of time to go through this just uh, to let net, to let you know that such uh, things exist. The similar things can be found with the other uh, modules. I will come back to that later, what it is. There's NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib for plotting. Yeah, let's see if the Jupyter Lab already started. I close the uh, tabs here I opened. So, too many users. Um, okay, then, <laughs> then it doesn't. It looks like it does not work for, um, yeah, just a couple of users as we are now. <laughs> mm, okay, what um, should we do? Mm. So an alternative um, would be, of course, to install the Anaconda package on uh, locally, but it's a bit too long for now. So um, if uh, alone this installation needs perhaps 10 minutes, and yeah, that's a bit too much. But um, yeah, it's perhaps something to keep in mind for later if you want to have a look at it later. So what I did now here is this uh, collaboratory provided by Google. It's also some kind of um, yeah, like this Jupyter Lab, but Google rebranded it. Yeah, what I did basically was uh, googling for it, collab, and then um, the first link, this uh, address, collab, um, we searched at Google, and then it asked asks you for your Google account 
I'm already logged in, and after logging in, I got um, directly here to this uh, introduction page. This is already a notebook, one could say, where it explains what the collaboratory is, and here we can open, we go on the file, in my case it's German, sorry for that, and you open a new notebook, and then you get an, uh, should get, get, or should get, a new, yeah, exactly, a new uh, notebook. It's um, basically what I wanted to show or get with the Jupyter. So, um, if you do this in, on Jupyter.org, just to, ha yeah, come back and just to uh, hand it over, and you will get something like that. It's, it looks similar, and there's also a introductional page for this Jupyter demo, yeah, just to show the comparison. It's basically a web interface um, which provides these cells here, so which uh, can be a cell containing programming code or text. So, let's uh, see how this works. Um, typically, uh, the most simple one is print with parentheses. It's called the print function, which should um, print nothing but a new line. Yeah, it did. And if you put there a text, a text is always um, something in quotes, like the typical hello world, it should, yeah, give me hello world. And it does the same with numbers. I can add some numbers. Also with floating point or scientific uh, notation. And it gives, the, gives that. So what, um, and prints the number out. Uh, what perhaps wasn't visible so easily, um, if you type it, you press then shift enter to execute the code cell. That's the same key stroke as in JupyterLab. And then runs the code. So if you only hit enter, you can type in another line. So you can build up multi-line code boxes or multiple lines in a code box. And then um, holding shift and pressing enter executes the cell and yeah produces uh, shows what the cell uh, outputs basically. And these cells can also contain text. Uh, I hope it's the same here in color. Yeah. <clears throat> it kind of um, differentiates best between code and text. So I can perhaps enter some markdown code and ex yeah, and run this in the same way by pressing shift enter then it formats it nicely this uh, formatting is um, caused by the um, hash symbol which indicates a header uh, a heading in the text and then there's also uh, italics by um, prefix yeah, writing an asterisk mark before and after the word and links like the bum de link here is um, automatically detected and yeah converted to a clickable link. And uh, when pressing Shift Enter, it is um, formatted nicely and shown. And I am not sure. Typically, equations should also work. Let's see if Google supports it. Like. Greek symbols, yeah, seems so, yeah. And then, for example, oh, typing a um, some special symbols from math, square root of one over nine, or something simple, and then it should. Oh, it does not format this. Oh, I forgot. Uh, so you need here uh, around the LaTeX code. This is what it is basically. You need these uh, dollar signs 
before and after to tell it that it's LaTeX, that it needs to run this code through a special interpreter, which yeah, renders the, the LaTeX and then um, shows the output here so that it's uh, converted to a graphic showing this uh, square root symbol and the, the fraction. Yeah, and th in this way you can um, document all this code by um, yeah, typing uh, text and, and links and, and uh, provide equations with the stuff you um, program and yeah, provide the, in this way, the documentation of the code you enter here along with the code itself. So it's a really um, um, compact way of, of, yeah, of setting up some analysis code. And these uh, cells I did not use, I can remove them by pressing here the um, trash bin symbol. Yeah, this I need perhaps. So, yeah, we had the hello world already. And what's perhaps uh, important or, or good to know for later is also that um, in the hello world we have in the first line four um, values. So the first one is a string and closed by quotes and the second one is a number and a floating point and um, the last ones are two floating points. Those are um, data objects in Python with um, which yeah, have a different type each. So um, in some cases this matters for example, when having arrays, if you have uh, longer arrays of data, it's uh, important and there are also types to show what, there's also a, a method to show what type something is. So if I uh, say, for example, type with parentheses and then type a string, it tells me it's a type string. This is, this is uh, important to know if you want to um, find out what this object um, yeah, what it can be done with, basically. So, going back to my presentation, I had a link to the basic um, documentation of Python. I'll show this here again. So here is uh, documentation of the types. This is where this uh, comes in. If you have a type, for example, string, a text sequence, you can look it up here, what string supports, and it's all of this is object oriented, so the string methods, uh, the string object I had here, this uh, text hello was a string object, it provides some functions and uh, yeah, meanings and tools, what it can be done with. Here is it explained and also a, a code box below showing always some examples how to use this. So uh, a simple example would be if I type hello, it supports the function upper to turn this to uppercase. And yeah, there are many, many other helpful uh, functions for this. Just, just to show this, that this exists and yeah. Um, yeah, when we go on with uh, data structures, I will come back to the types issues because there are differences how this, how the different types can be handled in different data structures. So, um, now I want to, um, continue with actual calculations. So, um, yeah, typically this Python is an uh, interpreted language and you can, um, put in these boxes, you can use those code boxes like a calculator, basically. If you type a general simple formula or even more complex formula, it just tries to calculate it and um, prints the output of the cell. In um, what's perhaps uh, um, yeah, something specific to Python or to this uh, syntax, if you perhaps want to make a power of something, so 3 to the power of 4, you can use, uh, you have to use the double asterisk symbol to get the, um, to get the result. And here is also um, important to note that, I hope it's here also the case, only the last command, the output of the last command is shown at the end of the box. So I type a different uh, formula like uh, 3 plus 4 
multiplied by 5 or something like that, then I get only the result of the last statement. To get to the result of the previous statement, I would have to use something like the print function again we had at the beginning. Oh, this is not complete. If I type only half of it, I could... No. Yeah, it, it gives me already um, some kind of explanation for this print function, if, I, if the cursor stays there. This depends a bit on the um, interface, so callup here provides this. It's to show you which uh, functions are available, some kind of um, um, yeah, auto um, completion feature, auto completion feature. Yeah. This way we can um, print both parts of the cell. And yeah, so um, what I had here in the top when um, formatting the code cell, I had the square root function. The square root is um, not, yeah, the square root is a special function which is not um, available by default, but um, it's in a, in a um, extra module contained which I have to load. So in Python also important is the import statement. So built in with Python is a math module and math provides also a square root function. So more, um, elaborated uh, mathematics tools are contained in this math module and I have to load this module and then address this function by prefixing this module before it. So um, math.sqrt um, gives this uh, function and I can add for example 81 and get the result 9. And there are also more um, functions contained in this module. I can, I just want to show how to get this information. Um, back to the uh, documentation I still have open. Um, there's a link called modules in the upper right and there's a uh, module index alphabetically and there's also documentation for the math module. I can look at it and here are all functions uh, documented which are supported. So some simple ones for just uh, rounding perhaps or absolute values and calculating the exponential and so on. Testing if a number is uh, not a number or um, infinite. And so on. Just that, that is just to show um, how to get some information when programming something, running in a problem, um, being not able to, to know what is yeah, where to find it or yeah, um, how to source it. Then um, yeah, it's perhaps good to know where to look at first. <laughs> yeah, access to documentation. So the next point would he would be here um, a different module we need later. So the math module is built in in Python and it's rather um, also kind of limited by providing only basic math functionality. There's a um, special module for numerical Python containing much more um, yeah, functions for numerical integration, numerical tools, which is called NumPy. Let's see if Google, Google supports it. Yeah, And there is this also a kind of extended math module, one could say. And um, NumPy, of course, also provides the square root. So Sometimes there are multiple ways to solve a problem. Oh, no, this is <laughs> nice to uh, show an error. And here it tells me, I, in the second line, I entered something which it can't calculate the square root of. So this uh, 81, I wrote it here with double quotes, which means it's a string, and from a text, a text string it can't uh, calculate the square root. So this is basically what the error says. It's sometimes a bit um, unintuitive because it doesn't refer here to the text um, to the text I had there, but it tells me that the input type is not supported. So input type is here the type of the 81, and um, yeah, the type is related to what we had here in a cell above, where we where I. Um, 
wrote type of hello is type string and the string is not um, yeah, compatible to this SQRT function. That's basically the cause of the error. If I remove the quotes, it calculates just fine. So from here we played um, with only with numbers and next would be let's add uh, a section head. So we now continue with lists and arrays. So a list uh, in Python is, or just let me ask <laughs> if uh, anyone who wants to follow is following fine, could try this out and yeah, it worked or uh, were there any problems? Okay. So I assume it's okay. If there's uh, any question, just feel free to ask or yeah, write it in, sh in the chat. Yeah, continuing with uh, lists and arrays. So um, if you have multiple numbers and yeah, you want to group them, or a simple example is as we go continue with this later, if you have a file and read in some data, you have often uh, lists of numbers. So um, that's where this leads us to. How is this? Can this be done in Python? Um, we name. We create a variable called a list and here we use the uh, square brackets. Square brackets in Python always indicate a list and this can have different, um, different entries. So, yeah, basically numbers, one, two, three, or whatever you like. And here it can also be mixed. I can also put, uh, some text in between and floating point numbers because in, from, for Python it's all an object, it's just fine and it adds them to the list. Oh, it doesn't show anything because this uh, cell does not return anything. I um, set the, the list value to a variable to see this variable. I have to um, put this last in the cell. Here you see an example of this auto completion. If I um, type the first letter of the variable and then press the tab, the, the tab key, which is a key with the two arrows sometimes on the uh, left of the keyboard next to Q, the Q uh, letter. Oh, yeah, it takes the first guess, so AL, and then it completes it with A list. If this is the last line in this code cell and I execute it, it shows me the contents of this variable. So, and, and in, in um, Python, there are two types of kind of lists. Another one is also called tuple. So, it's written like that. And it can have the same content, but with non-square brackets, but parentheses. And the only difference is here. Sometimes you will come across this. Um, the difference is here that a tuple is later not um, modifiable anymore. So I haven't shown this here, but this is just to define it. You see that it also is output with parentheses instead of square brackets. But um, here after the list, I can, um, for example, change individual values within the list. So um, if I add a new code cell in between and let's say a list, I can index individual um, entries with square brackets. So let's say the second element, which is a three in my case, I want to make it a seven or something. Then the numbering starts at zero here. So the first one is zero, then one, then two, and so on. So if I, yeah, output this, that gives me three. It's a second element. It's kind of confusing, but in nearly, nearly all, uh, in, in a lot or 90% of programming languages, they often start with a zero index <coughs> for this uh, arrays and lists. And, um, but what I can do here with the list is modifying it, taking the first, writing a seven, or, or what did I have? A seven, and then, oh, it doesn't show it anymore, but I, 
type a list again and then I see it was replaced with seven. This is a tuple, this won't work. So if I do this here and tell it, um, yeah, replace the first one by a seven, it will certainly complain about it. And yeah, that's yeah the core difference between them. Tuple is a bit lighter; it's uh, less space, uh, needs less memory, and it's faster sometimes. But yeah, so that you have seen it, and oh, we're already near five. So let's finish the list and array section. Um, but from tuple we can also only access it. That's just fine. What I um, want to um, do next is, uh, yeah, NumPy. We imported NumPy already. NumPy um, supports something special, which is an array structure, which is a very fast um, array for a large amount of numbers. And this is um, introduced, or this is created by a list. So basically I could add I create a NumPy array with a list, but this won't work because it's... Oh, it works. <laughs> but it's not so useful because it's a, a mixed data type. We have here numbers and words and all mixed. And if I want to compute something with that, it will be difficult. So I can call this array1 and... So we see this again. I can use a comma to add a new value and for, for, for example the power of arrays is to calculate with them um, if I want to yeah, add a 2 it will complain about this because the um, addition is not possible for strings again. So um, here I could make a copy of the cell Oops. and Perhaps possible to insert them. Yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah. But um, I could uh, then just uh, define it differently if I have only numbers or also floating numbers. Then this should work just fine. So I saw it made of it an array first, the numbers I um, added at the beginning. So it's 1, 2, 4.5 and 7. And then I added uh, 2 to the array and it increased all entries of the array by 2. So this is the second one which is displayed here. And here in the output it uses again parentheses for grouping. As you can see I marked only the, the core, the two arrays which were output, but a round of them is a tuple and that's where the tuple comes back in. You will see this very often, some parentheses about, around values. Always when I write two values with a comma in between, um, in the output for example, where I want to output uh, two values at the end of a cell, it will convert them to a tuple and um, output those in this, in this uh, syntax. Yeah, that's basically about arrays, lists and arrays I wanted to cover here in the, as requirement for reading in data and processing stuff. Um, yeah, as I see, yeah, there's still one or two minutes. So another important one is also dictionary, which will you come across very often. Call it like that. Oh, I could add perhaps the Python type name. It's uh, called dict. And yeah, what this looks like is um, something like, so I will call it only D. Here you use a different type of <laughs> brackets or, or yeah, it's curly brackets in the end. So in Python they use all kinds of brackets or parentheses and yeah, it's uh, also kind of an array, but like an associative one. You do not address the uh, single elements by the index, but you can provide a name. So you can say, uh, literally, the first one is uh, 3, and then the second one, oh, without 
second one is um, 3.14 and you can also use numbers for indexing so you can say 23 is 42 and this helps this is often used for example in uh, settings we will see this with um, functions later where you yeah, provide a list of settings the first one is the name of the setting and the value default so um, yeah but it can also be used for um, yeah copying data somewhere and yeah this is in the end of the cell the whole um, dictionary was output but I can also um, output only right only a special element so for example here I use again square brackets for accessing an element and then I can write give me the sec give me the one I call it second and then it gives me 3.14 in the line before yeah giving providing the whole dictionary next is about plotting and keeping it tidy here, cleaning up the unused cells. There's a, a package called matplotlib. Mat, not math, but matplot like matrices. And from this, I import a sub module which is called pyplot. And it's a different import command. I call it PLT. So this is another way of importing modules. So modules can be often can be loaded or have an internal hierarchy I can um, descend or pick a certain submodule I want to load or import. So I don't need all matplotlib. I could also write this differently. But um, to keep the, the next code a bit shorter, I rename this whole um, structure as PLT to make it short. This matplotlib, I mentioned it on the first slide, is also a different uh, another package. And let's look for it for the documentation. We type, we Google for matplotlib and it suggests me already the um, website. But let's say what the search engine does with it. A, a good hint is always to append doc for documentation. And then I get to the main documentation play page. Oh, it tells me here. No, it's not an old version. But it has a version number in the link. That's why this box appears. I can click on the suggested link and then I get the latest documentation. It yeah, explains how to install it in some circumstances, but here it should be available. We'll see right now. And there's again, as I mentioned, a quick start guide. Where it shows basic example some text and yeah also what kind of plot types it provides lots of examples how to do different plots and how to configure them it's often you find what you need and can um, just take the examples and adjust them a bit a little bit and yeah to to get get them to do or to show what you want them to show and uh, for programming, important is also something called the reference. So the API reference is then of interest, where all the submodules are explained here on the right side. And what I imported here is a pyplot module. And then there are also some functions explained. Just that you have seen it, you don't need to <laughs> remember it. Uh, but yeah, that's what it basically looks. And then all the um, included options and and objects are then uh, linked, provided with a link, and you can, yeah, look at it. Typically, if you run into a problem or want to know how something world works, you would uh, Google for it, and like matplotlib plotting or something, and you would perhaps um, be directed to this page of the official documentation, or there's a forum, or yeah, something like Stack Overflow, where some examples are written. So to continue here, I imported the pyplot module. And yeah, next it um, provides a plot function plt dot 
plot. Again, a function call with parentheses, and yeah, it needs some um, x and y. Did we define something above? No, we had only mixed lists. So, to make it short, we can do, we enter here a list, so with 1, 2, 3, as x and as y, we can do something like, perhaps non, not that strictly linear, like 6, 4, 8, and execute the cell, or run the cell, and then I get the plot already. So, done. <laughs> and, yeah, there are lots of options. So, this plot function supports a lot more. Oh, displays it here already embedded in this view. Some documentation here shows how to make uh, colored circle markers, red pluses. So, it's a combination of um, if you want to have um, markers at the data point and what the connecting lines should be displayed as. So, for example, written out, I would write marker and being a little circle, then I get circles at the data points. So it um, draws the points at the um, positions I told it here. So the first one is the x, y, the x uh, positions and then the y. So I, I'm at 1 and 6, and then at 2 and 4 again, and the last one is at 3 and 8. And I can also configure the line by just telling it it should use red color, perhaps. And it yeah, gives me a red plot. And yeah, what's often perhaps missing is some kind of grid. It's also simple. I can, again, use this PLT uh, module and call the grid function, which just displays a grid in the background. So, often uh, you don't want to um, provide the values directly in the plot function. You will add, you will have some lists in, in before, so we can define them um, previously. For that, um, we could uh, create some variables, which uh, with some, some sensible names, like x positions, will be something from NumPy. NumPy provides nice um, functions or help us to create um, a set of values. So, a range from 1 to 10, perhaps, and then let's see what it creates. These steps and for the y positions, I can, for the sake of example here, I can use uh, a different function for creating, uh, for generating some numbers, for example, lin space, which is um, uh, does it provide some help. That stop here it gives some some clues how the parameters what the parameters say we uh, need to pro provide. So it uh, asks for a, a start value, a stop value, and the number of of um, data points. It's a bit different than from the A range before. So I give it like four and nine, and we need nine values. Because we have nine at the before defined. Oh, it doesn't show it, so I can prepend, append this to the x position here, and then it's shown below. Yeah, it automatically um, generated nine numbers in the range between, yeah, equally spaced. Yeah, that's a word, that's a function name indicating linear space, linear spacing uh, from nine, uh, from four to nine, and this will be then my um, data I provide to the plot function. I can type this again. Plot x pose and y pose. And, yeah, okay, that's <laughs> a linear line was expected. 
And the short code we saw earlier in the documentation is the same what I did here with the circles. They are often some less intuitive um, short codes. It should be RO, which then just uh, plots some uh, numbers, uh, some, some circles. And with a dash um, at the end, it connects them with a line. So that are the basics. Again, a grid. Ah, and yeah, perhaps you want to uh, tell or yeah, add what the axes are. So there are also some functions for adding labels. So I can tell it here um, that it's the x-axis and it adds some text below. And this also supports, oh, <laughs> one box, also supports LaTeX like I can write here like uh, a thing again for testing. Yeah, and it nicely formats that. <clears throat> and the same can be done for the Y. Not, we don't have that yet. <laughs> we have only Y. Y label and and here we can do also uh, Yeah, symbol. So that are the basics for um, the plotting. Ah, something I forgot. Often we also have want to have a legend, a legend, but there is no label. That's because I need to provide a label when plotting something. I had a plot created with x and y position and I uh, need po to provide a label, so telling it what it's called. And um, yeah, let's call it test data. And then it adds a legend with that label on it, so indicating that the red lines are test data. This makes more sense if you if you have uh, more, um, if you plot something more, so I can uh, could copy this line from above and also plot this here and call it something something else. Um, like first plot and perhaps remove the color information so that it picks something randomly. And then I have two lines. Yeah, the first one was not defined over the whole range as the second one. And I get a, a legend with different lines and indicating which is which. Yeah. One uh, note, it, yeah, as I said before, it always shows um, what the, it, it outputs at the end of the cell what the last command uh, returned as value. Um, that's why here this uh, cryptic map plot lib legend legend is uh, output. That's the last command legend. It, con it returns an object and the text representation of this object is this uh, written here. To avoid that, I can just add a semicolon and it's away. The semicolon is uh, typically in Python just a symbol to, um, to, um, um, end, to end a command. So after it, I could write the next command in one line, which is yeah, which I would discourage from, but just that you have seen this, it would be possible to um, yeah concatenate different commands by um, yeah by writing a semicolon in between. That's still valid syntax. <clears throat> and here it uh, avoids that something is yeah returned at the end of the cell. And plotted uh, some some text is written of the object. If I don't want that information, I can just yeah use the semicolon to yeah make it quiet or silent. <clears throat> the last part for today is uh, functions. No, I need a text box. This one we don't need. So let's call it functions. 
So that's a um, syntax. Um, yeah, this uh, I will show how to yeah basic how to define building blocks for code by yourself. That's very useful for reusing code. If you have uh, something which calculates something and want to do this more often, it's very, it makes very much sense to um, define a function for it. Function could be like we had before this um, square root function is something which exists already. Um, but we can do our own functions arbitrarily, we can do something useful or yeah, whatever we, we want to have. So I call it calc square. So the syntax is, is that correctly? The syntax is here, it always starts with a definition, a definition word, in short def, and a space, and then the, the name. Here it can have um, any word. I think it should not start with the number. And also upper and lower case is um, to your choice. There are some conventions. So some people, if it consists of different words, like in this case, quite square, some people write it with an underscore between the words. Some write it with a uh, chemical case, it's called. So the first one is, is lowercase, but also intermediate words start with an uppercase. So that's kind of, um, yeah, as everyone likes it. But important is, uh, I would recommend to keep it, keep it consistent. If you decide for something, choose a different, a certain style, just keep the style all over and uh, switching styles in between some projects, it gets really, um, yeah, difficult to read and, and then to follow later on. And the function definition is, uh, yeah, needs also parentheses because, yeah, that um, indicates what the arguments of a function are. Here I call it x, simply just a letter and a single character. What follows is then, yeah, I can, I could write code, for example, Print, print some text. Here is another function name. And if I execute or run this cell, nothing happens. So same as with defining variables, I would need to call this to see something. But I can't do it like that because I defined it, that gets an argument, it needs an argument. Also, this argument is not used, but it's defined like that, and therefore it needs something, and then it calculate, it uh, gives out the text I yeah, told it to output. We can use the argument we provided here, for example, by yeah, writing it here, it's at the second part in the print statement, then I changed the function and now it outputs also the value I provide. Then I change the value and it changes the output. I could also do some calculation in between them there. So in this case, um, outputting the value I provided it with and um, add something, add, increase the value by one. And yeah, that's an example, but to make it more useful, we only want to let it calculate something. So I remove the print and it should now return something. So returning means that it does not write a text, but something I could assign a variable with. So x, for example, to the power of 2 then every value gets squared and now it returns only the value so mm, if i set this to the variable a then the variable a contains that value this is only possible with this uh, return or we need this return statement in order to yeah, let the function, it's called return or give a value back, a value um, yeah, you can use somewhere and yeah, store it in another variable. 
And uh, these functions can also be used now for uh, modifying for modifying lists of numbers. We defined some lists above, such as the x position, and I could, yeah, I will show the x position what we had before to remember. And I can use this function to run the calculation on the whole list. And then it returns the array with every, um, every item in it squared. And this can then be used as shorthand also for plotting. So the PLT module is still loaded from above. It goes across, it keeps being loaded across the cells and then I can plot, um, again, the X positions for the, for the, yeah, X and having here the calc square as the y positions. So I do not need to um, define a y anymore. I can directly paste in here the function call of uh, modifying the x values and then it plots me yeah, the squared, the square function directly. Yeah, and if I provide a semicolon, it does not give me the text anymore. And yeah, I could add here the grid again to make it nicer. Yeah, that's um, basically the basics for the functions I yeah, intended to show here today. And now we already reached the half past five <laughs> time. And yeah, that's it basically. Tomorrow I would like to uh, give a short recap and then continue with files and folders, how to look at the file system and yeah, start with loading data from files and plotting them. Thank you very much for your attention.